I'm done buying North Face. Salutations, everyone. Welcome to Backpacking with Buckley. Today, I just wanted to do a little short video with you, inspired by a deep dive down a random rabbit hole on the internet. And that, as you can probably see by the title, is why I've decided to be done purchasing North Face equipment and gear and clothing. So it's kind of like a little story today, and I want to start by giving a fair shake to North Face by uh, talking a little bit about their origins and their original intent. They were founded in the 1960s by a gentleman by the name of Douglas Tompkins and his wife at the time, uh, and they owned two companies, the North Face and a company, from, if you're from my generation, you may remember, called Esprit. Uh, so at any rate, they started that company with the best of intentions to design clothing for the outdoors, and in Esprit's case, maybe a little more fashion line. But shortly after becoming rather successful in both companies, Douglas decided that he did not any longer want to provide clothing for people because it was such a wasteful thing to do. And his quote, to be exact, was that he didn't want to sell people things that they didn't need. Uh, so what he did after he got divorced from his first wife, he remarried and moved to Chile and purchased 2.2 million acres of conservation land. Uh, so he really did go down a path of righteousness and left behind the company of North Face. So that will bring us to our current uh, temperature at the company of the North Face. I just want to tell you about a few things I discovered that I found rather shocking. So before I start telling the story about the North Face in its current state as a business, um, I think it's uh, fair for me to say that I still own some North Face gear. I'm not going to just throw it in the garbage because it's still good gear. However, having discovered the fact that uh, there's some things I'm not too fond of about the company, I've decided that I will no longer be purchasing any gear from the North Face. So here's why. Let's start with number one. I won't dive deep into detail. But generally speaking, when I look at their resume, I see a pretty weak environmental stance in terms of what they do to give back to the environment, conservation, using uh, materials that are uh, environmentally safe, so on and so forth. Now, I purchase things from China. I purchase unethical products all over the place. Um, so I am not by any means getting on a high horse on the subject. But it is nice to know that there are companies out there that are bohemoths that have decided to take a little different path. And I'll talk about one of those when, before we close this video out. So since about, I would say, the mid 80s, when brand names and fashion became a big deal, uh, North Face started to explode uh, outside of the realm of the outdoors. And as we know today, North Face is a household name that you see everywhere. Um, they are arguably more about fashion than they are about making expedition clothing or mountaineering clothing or backpacking clothing, etc., etc. They do make high quality clothing, but at the same time, they're kind of all about fashion. I think most of us would probably agree about that. All right, so I didn't give you a heck of a big argument in terms of a court case on why North Face is something I'm done with, but there is a straw that broke the camel's back, and it's pretty hilarious to be honest with you. I started researching kind of what North Face is into these days when I realized that they are all about fashion. And as you saw in my thumbnail, perhaps, there is a Gucci logo attached to that North Face. Now, ironically enough, we are all funny, are all uh, probably familiar with the term Patagucci. But the irony in that is that North Face has genuinely teamed up with Gucci. And I'll show you above these $1,200 boots from Gucci and North Face that right in the description, which I'll show you the details because I probably won't quote this directly, but says to keep in a keep dry and away from heat and sunlight and rain. <laughs> so the North Face has put their stamp of approval on a pair of boots that they have said to store in a flannel bag, uh, keep away from heat and rain and wetness, and if they do, immediately sponge off with a cloth. That is the North Face today. In addition, they've partnered with other companies like Supreme and uh, really just expanded into the uh, kind of Kanye realm of fashion. In other words, extraordinarily uh, inflated prices for uh, coveted items, kind of like the Melanzana of the fashion world. Um, you might know that there's custom Nikes out there for $3,000, $4,000. Well, now you can get some Gucci boots that you can't get wet, wet for 1400 
So another interesting part of the North Face story kind of leads me directly into what brand of clothing should you choose? Now there's lots and lots of good ones out there. Uh, lots of cottage brands like Enlightened Equipment uh, where you can get certain specialty pieces. But if you're looking for a general good all around clothing gear company, I really still do recommend the good old Patagucci, AKA Patagonia. They were founded around the same time. Uh, Douglas Tompkins, who was the North Face founder, was the high school friend of the Patagonia founder, believe it or not, whose name was, and I have to read this, Yvonne Chenard. And he maintained and remains to him maintain his integrity within the clothing world to the best of his ability. They give back 1% of their profits to environmental causes. They start things like Warnware, which uh, takes old worn clothing from not only Patagonia, but other companies, repairs it, and then resells it. They use a lot of sustainable materials, and I can go on and on. Do the research for yourself. Patagonia really is a pretty legitimate company. Patagonia, North Face, they both had roots in the right intentions, but one has clearly emerged as the winner in terms of what is the most ethical brand to purchase. So, Patagonia it is, folks. North Face, I'm sorry, but until you change your ways, I'm turning my back on you. Thanks for watching this little tidbit. Stick around. I've got some gratitude to pay to a few other uh, YouTubers and things that I've gotten lucky on lately. All right, real quickly, a few shout outs to some people I'm very grateful for, and I've been a lucky duck lately. I've won not one, but two giveaways and received a third gift, all from YouTube channels. Let's start with Todd Andy Lease from In Our Element. They have a great adventure channel, and I won a giveaway from them from Kula Cloth, which, as you may know, is a primarily female device used for backwoods uh, going to the bathroom. Uh, but Whitney wasn't interested in a Kula Cloth, and I decided that they have some other items, and I wound up with something I've been looking to pick up anyway, which is a cork massage ball. So thanks, Todd and Elise. I'm looking forward to trying this out and uh, love your channel. Secondly, I got another piece of art and I, oddly enough, like hike, Nicole hikes a lot, I got another rock painted beautifully by a channel called Hike One Paint One. And there's a nice little note on the back that I won't share with you because it's personal enough. I want to save it for myself, but I assure you this is a cool little addition to my uh, swag wall. So thanks Hike One Paint One. Really cool of you to send me this out. Last but not least, I got a big old box of goodies from Chris at Barnyard Outdoors. I won one of his giveaways, and I won some really cool stuff, starting with two of these bags from Big Sky International. And I'll be showing these off in a, in a video in the future, but these are both uh, made to hold your backpacking food and keep it warm while it's steeping. Really cool, ultralight little pieces of gear that I got in that package. Along with something I've always wanted, uh, the Knock Outdoors Buck Food Bag, which is a discontinued item. So this is a coveted thing, still in the box. And this is just a thing that you can divide your uh, dehydrated food in half and carry it in something like this. I'll probably show that off in a video as well. I also got a titanium spoon, which I am super happy about because it is polished and it has a nice mouth to it, according to Chris. And last but not least, something I've never carried on trail, but might now do it because I got some ultralight salt and pepper shakers. So thanks to Chris at Barnyard Outdoors. Appreciate you sending that out. Appreciate uh, getting lucky too. So without further ado, thanks everybody. We'll see you on the next adventure.